Hello everyone and welcome to my March 2024 reading vlog. It is March 1st. Finally the year begins because January and February don't count. So, so far we're only a couple hours into this month and I have started reading Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. It is the book that I've chosen for the month off of my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster and it is 33 hours long. As for the other books I plan to read this month, I plan to read the Court of Owls comic series, part of the Batman New 52, and I will be reading its novelization as well for the video that will come out during the first half of the month. So of course I will say my thoughts here, but that will mostly be in that separate reading blog. As for the rest of my month, that remains to be seen, so please look forward to what I read next.
about 13 days into the month now, and all of the books that I have been reading have been for other videos. First one was obviously Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster. Finally finished that huge 33 hour long beast today, and I'm giving that book two stars. You will definitely hear more about it in that vlog that will be coming out next month, but I just wanted to say that it was not worth 1,000 pages nor was it worth 33 hours of an audiobook. I then read two comic books, that being Batman Volume 1, The Court of Owls by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, and Volume 2, City of Owls by Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, James Tinian, and others. That was followed by reading The Court of Owls, an original prose novel by Greg Cox, which was for the video that will be coming out this month titled The Batman Court of Owls Blog. I ended up giving Volume 1 three stars, Volume 2 two and a half stars, and the original novel four stars. I will obviously be talking more about my thoughts in that vlog, but the Court of Owls storyline was pretty interesting, though it had some faults, and the original novel was actually a sequel to the Court of Owls saga rather than just a direct novelization, and had a lot of interesting ideas and characterizations put into it. So I really, really enjoyed it. So now that those giant projects are out of the way, I can focus on enjoying the rest of my reading month in a more casual sense. So now I am reading The Book of Renfield, A Gospel of Dracula by Tim Lucas, which is a book that was published in 2005 and I have not been able to find a copy of. I believe it was independently published and then was out of print. But it seems that uh, last year they put out a new edition, so I was able to acquire the ebook for it and I have just started it. I am 47 pages into it. I thought it was going to be directly Renfield's perspective the entire time, but once again, it is John Seward trying to collect everything that had happened during the 1885 event of them dealing with Dracula. So it is him in about the 1890s, collecting everything with the help of his friends, and now he is writing extra stuff on it prior to his death. My first issue with the book is that this little addition he has added as the prologue to the book prior to his death is taking place in 1939. World War I has already occurred, and that World War II is approaching. The events of Dracula take place in 1885. John Seward is a doctor who runs an asylum. He can't be that young. I will give him that he was maybe 30 at the youngest. For 1939, that would put him in his late 80s, early 90s. But at the end of his prologue, he says, I'm in the autumn of my life. Buddy, you're in the dead winter. You're about to die. <laughs> so that was a very, very odd year thing. They were trying to put um, Seward as someone probably younger in order to match him with Lucy, who is younger. But I'm guessing he was probably 30 at the possibly youngest. He had to go to medical school and do like his work in order to become an asylum head. So yeah, he would be in his 30s at the youngest, so very weird addition. Now I've just gotten to the point in the book where he has been introduced to Renfield as a patient, so we will see what happens there. So that is my reading update for now. I will update you soon.
Hello! Just a quick update to say that I have finished The Book of Renfield, A Gospel of Dracula by Tim Lucas, and I am ending up giving the book four stars. I thought it was a very interesting look in the past of Renfield. I think the original ideas of how Renfield grew up and how he became the slave to Dracula was very, very interesting, a little bit creative. I've never seen anything like that before. Of course, they did the thing where everything has been connected from the beginning, and I could get past it because it was enough of an interesting ride to go on, and the tension was built up very well, and it took me a long time to figure out all the connections. I really enjoyed how he grew up being raised by a vicar who didn't really love him, and the connections of this lack of affection turning into him becoming so drawn into the supernatural and especially his connection to animals was very interesting as well. I really enjoyed the epistolary format of course and the writing style was very of the time period. There wasn't a lot of anachronisms. I think that's the when you use modern words wrong. I really enjoyed it and I thought it was very good. There was a lot tacked on at the end and I understand that it was in connection to the author's own experiences. Pardon the pause, my dog wanted out of the bathroom. Um, I understand that the author had a lot of connections to like writing based off of 9-11 because the book was published in 2003. So while that part I mostly skimmed, I thought the rest of the novel was very well done. And I am not sure about what final books I want to read for the month, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to tell you my final two books that I will be reading this month. So far, I have started Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. This is an author I have read from before. I think I've read all of her works. And this iteration is about the retelling of Medusa and Perseus and their whole myth. If you don't know anything about this mythology, you should read this book because this is very baby's first interaction with Medusa and Perseus. It's very tied into the new modern feminist retelling of Greek myth where they're like, this man, <laughs> he's not the hero. He kills people. He's mean to women. As if there's not like discussions to be had about the interactions and misogyny of ancient Greece and how it ties into our modern culture and whatnot. This book is also very weak so far because it uh, markets itself as a retelling of the Perseus myth through Medusa's eyes, and yet there is a perspective chapter for every character involved. So far we have gotten um, the Gorgon sisters getting Medusa, we have gotten Zeus creating and essentially birthing Athena from his head, and we have the origins of Perseus. So here I was thinking we were going to be getting a Circe by Madeline Miller type story, and instead we're just getting the entire myth retold to us in the most simple language possible. It is not compelling to me because I have read this myth before, I know all about it, and I'm sure maybe people who have no idea about the myth can get some substance from it but for me this is so like this is childish like I usually really like Greek myth retellings but this is so like simple and I don't see the point of it being published because it's not really sending any sort of message for me. And the second book that I plan to read as my final book for the month is we finally got ourselves a copy of the short story The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. 
Gillian Flynn has written Gone Girl, Sharp Objects, and Dark Places, and this is her short story. We finally got a nice hard copy cover, so I will be showing that off, and I doubt I will have any clips of me talking about it because it will be short, so I will just tell you my thoughts in the final wrap-up. So, I will see you there! Okay, here we are at the final wrap-up for March 2024. This month has seemed so, so long, so let's just finally get this over with. So I read a total of eight books this month. For my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster, I read Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, and I ended up giving that book two stars because it was just way too long for everything that happened in it and I did not want to have to listen to a 33 hour long audiobook, double speed or not. I didn't really enjoy listening to it and I felt that the book would have been fine shorter, for sure. Next, I read The Court of Owls and the City of Owls by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, amongst others. I gave The Court of Owls three stars and I gave The City of Owls two and a half stars. I really enjoyed the story of Bruce discovering the Court of Owls um, sort of nursery rhyme that he had been taught since childhood was true, and him dealing with that and his connections to that and trying to stop it. A lot of the stories that were tacked on to the end of the City of Owls uh, really dropped the rating for me. I didn't enjoy them, and of course I didn't enjoy the twist in the second volume as well. Next I read Batman The Court of Owls, an original prose novel by Greg Cox, and I ended up giving this story four stars. This really surprised me, had a lot of really fun stuff in it because it was an original story that was only slightly tied to The Court of Owls story, sort of a sequel, a follow-up, and the author definitely did his homework because all of these tabs were references to the original Court of Owls story done in a very well done and well executed way. I really liked this book and I highly recommend it amongst the Batman original novels that were published. I then read The Book of Renfield, A Gospel of Dracula by Tim Lucas, and I ended up giving that book four stars. I had been waiting years to read the book because it had been in my radar, but I couldn't really acquire a copy, and I finally could, and I really enjoyed the epistolary format, I enjoyed the writing style, I enjoyed the original story that had Renfield's backstory in it and his connections to Dracula, I really enjoyed seeing his sort of psychological study of his life, and the outcome of it in connection to the original novel. So while there are a little bit of um, minor points in it that I didn't really gel with, I ultimately really enjoyed it. I then continued on with the Batman New 52 run and I read Volume 3 Death of the Family by Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, and Jonathan Glapian. I ended up giving this one, I believe, four stars. I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed Joker's obsession with Batman. However, um, I have to demote the book because uh, Joker ripping his face off is to me one of the like dumbest edgelord things like ever. Like, I get the Scarecrow losing his face in some of the stories, like, that just adds to how scary he is. Joker losing his face is just a little bit like, okay, why? I guess you had to one-up yourself somehow. But the rest of the novel besides the face ripping is very, very good. Actually, very creepy. I really enjoyed it. And I thought this was a well-done story of the Joker and his relationship with the Batman and Batman's relationship to his Bat family. I then read Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, and I'm giving that book two stars. It is trying to ride the coattails of the modern feminist retelling of various Greek myths, this one being Medusa and Perseus, as well as the Greek gods. While I really enjoy when actual modern day uh, books published include the gods as real things and that are like involved with the story, I really enjoy that aspect. This book was ultimately just baby's first Medusa, like... Oh, Perseus is such a very, very bad man. Why would you think he's the hero? 
I think even in ancient Greek times there was some nuance and discussion as to how Perseus was a hero. Yes, slaying a monster is one of the things you do in order to become a hero. And yes, there was discussion of like misogyny and the connection between men and women in ancient Greece. And it just felt very childish, very like surface level and wasn't really diving deep into anything. I feel like the author just wrote this to follow the trend rather than truly having something to say. So it was incredibly disappointing for me and I really don't recommend it unless you have never heard of a Medusa story at all, like not even Percy Jackson. And then I finished my month by reading The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This was the short story that she wrote, the final thing that she has written in the past 10 years, and I believe it was for a short story collection that was edited by by George R. R. Martin because at the end of the book she says this is for George who told me to write a story. This was a pretty interesting little thing. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what it's about because it's only 60 pages and that would just be the entire little short story. However, I found the opening to be, you know, crazy wild and I guess that's how it's supposed to um, grip you and pull you into the story, but I found that there was too much tell telling, like the character explaining everything at the end. That felt a bit weak for me, but the rest of the premise was pretty interesting. It just didn't have long enough to properly develop any twists or develop any proper tension that had to do with the um, spooky ghost story, apparently. <laughs> so I ended up giving this three stars. It could not be any higher. It was simply too short. So that's it. That's my month. We've had a crazy month weather-wise. It's been every single form of weather that you could think of. We've had snow, sunshine, and now rain. And I'm really, really hoping that April finally brings in proper spring weather so I can start enjoying my time outdoors. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe if you're interested. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.